that is Begim Tohirjanova after a crazy game against Ateva Abrahamian. Begim, congratulations. Welcome back to the Thank show. You. Tell us about the game because it felt smooth at the beginning. You got that exchange up. It didn't feel like you have any problems, but then that yeah, swinging yeah. attack came in uh, your direction with h5, h4. Were you worried at that time? Uh, to be honest, at first I thought after h5 I can even play h4. I have so many defensive moves, so I didn't really care about it. Even queen a4, queen b4 wasn't necessary. Uh, uh, like, I just had an exchange up. It's not an easy position to play, of course, uh, but I did so many moves that I didn't have to do to mm -hmm. let this attack. And then, I don't know, even after a But it wasn't before, easy. I, I mean, like... we were looking at it yeah, with no, the, the engine. Position it actually is not wasn't easy. easy at all. No, absolutely. I'm not sure about queen a4, queen b4. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that I didn't know how... Uh, yeah, I, I thought probably queen c2 or knight d2 is most logical move, but I don't know why... I played queen a4, queen b4. I immediately regretted it. I'm, I'm like, I'm just giving away a tempo for no reason. You're leaving one tempo on the table. Only, yes. Exactly. Their only idea is to play h, uh, h5, h4. That's why it didn't make sense. And it was at this point when she infiltrated with her knight on h2. Now things are starting to look dangerous for you. Yeah, before I played rook e1, knight f1, I calculated this line and some, for some reason I thought I should be fine after uh, king g2, what I played during the game. Uh, then I just realized, text, text, and then uh, like after rook h1, uh, she had to play knight, king d7 immediately. That's mm -hmm. what I missed, king d7, and I cannot take on h8 and, and I don't have any counterplay. Mm. To leave the f file potentially open so that she can go rook to f8, followed by e3, yeah? To force you to open up yeah, that Yeah, the thing diagram. is that I just cannot take on h8. That, that's why I was like, I felt like my position should be fine uh, when I was calculating. I totally missed king d7. Yeah, yeah, king like, to d7 was the key move. And yeah. when she didn't spot it's... it, did you get a, a new burst of energy <laughs> <laughs> at that point? I was like, I saw the rook h4, rook f4 idea before as well. So this was my... Uh, uh, like initial calculation. I thought I'm getting this position, I should be fine. At least I have a draw because the king is very weak. Yes. So that's why king d7 was so important for her. But here, then I, I thought, okay, I have only one trick. After uh, rook h4, she needs to find queen e8, which is not that hard. But if she finds king, queen e8, then I will make a draw. If she doesn't, anything else is uh, losing for her. That's why I just decided to try this. Um, like last option and it worked out. And it worked out because after queen to f6, queen to h5, there are just simply no more ways to defend against this uh, connection of the mm -hmm. queen and yeah. the rook. Begging congratulations, back to back victories, two and a half out of three. This is a good start for you. Keep it up and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Congratulations, Begum, indeed.